therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification in life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin we reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's title, uh, the message title is One Bad Sin. Before I begin and uh, share the gospel, why don't we pray one more time? So let's close our eyes and bow our head. Father, thank you for bringing us to your presence. What a powerful name that you have, God. And Jesus, we thank you for uh, saving us from our sin, saving us from death, saving us from our grave. Father, we ask you to cleanse our hearts through your words and really um, restore our soul, restore our hearts for you. Let us return to you by, uh, by listening to your words, by listening to your commands, and let us be the true Christian who worship you with spirit and soul and mind and physical body, not only on Sunday, at this moment, but through our, our daily lives. Father, I pray for um, those who couldn't make today, I ask you to please knock on their hearts um, to come and seek you. And if there are anyone who is physically ill or affected by um, the virus, I ask you to please heal them, um, their spirit, their mind, and their body as well. We thank you for all the things that you've done in our life and still doing in our lives. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, we saw Jericho's wall were down by the power of God. And the Israelites demolished everyone and everything in the city as God told them to do. With the great victory on the conquest of Canaan, Joshua and on all other Israelites confidently looked towards the next city or next town, which was Ai or Ai. Joshua sent spies on the city of Ai, and those spies came back with a positive report that they can go and fight with only maybe a couple thousand men of Israel instead of the whole army goes and fight in the battle. And with the great confidence, the 3,000 men went up to fight Ai. But the 3,000 men sent to the battle, uh, they were routed by the men of Ai. And on top of that, 36 Israel men were killed by them during the battle. If this was a just normal, regular battle between you know, countries and countries or group of people to group of people, then we might think that it was Israelites' a mistake of underestimating the men of Ai. But we've got to remember, this was not just a normal battle between human to human or between group to group. This was God's holy war. This was God versus idolatrous people. God was a leader of this war. God was a judge in the war. So Israelites' defeat was not just a mistake or underestimation of the Israelites. Something was up and God did not give the victory to his people and caused the Israelites to lose 36 precious lives. Joshua tore his clothes and went to God and he prayed, prayed. Oh God, why did you insist on bringing these people here across the Jordan? Did you make us come here to make us the victim of Amorites, to wipe us out? Do you want us to be dead here after you brought all the way from Egypt into the promised land, after you parted the water, 
at the Jordan River and gave us the victory at Jericho? Joshua asked God, and God answered him, Get up. Why are you sad? Why are you groveling? Israel has sinned. They've broken my covenant, and they've have taken forbidden plunder and cover up the theft, squirreling it away with their own stuff. I can't continue with you until you get rid of yourselves of the cursed things. That was written in Joshua 7. Yes, it wasn't the Israelites under, it wasn't the Israelites underestimated the men of I. But God's wrath was upon Israel because Israel has disobeyed God. Israel disobeyed God's command and sinned against God. So God did not allow them to move further in taking their, uh, the land of Canaan. From verse 1 of Joshua 7, the very first verse of Joshua 7, we know who sinned and what kind of sin this one man did against God. So let's go to Joshua 7, verse 1. Joshua 7, verse 1. Please turn your Bible to Joshua 7 and verse 1. Since we have a same name, Joshua, <laughs> Joshua, could you read verse 1? <clears throat> Joshua 7, yeah. verse 1. But the people of Israel broke faith in the regard of to, David, to devoted things for Achan, the son of Carmi, son of Zad, Zabdi, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of the devoted things, and the anger of the Lord burned against the people of Israel. Achan, from the tribe of Judah, took some of the devoted things of the people of Jericho, which God told them to, to uh, not take for themselves. So the anger of the Lord burned against the whole entire community of Israel. The word devoted things in verse one was translated in different words in the message version. It was translated cursed things, cursed things. When God took down Jericho, he ordered them to burn out the city and everything in it because it was cursed by their idolatrous worship. God also said, except for those gold and silver and bronze and iron vessels, and those needs to be in God's, uh, in the treasury of God's house. But one man, one man out of the whole Israelites named Achan was greedy over cursed thing and couldn't control his heart and thoughts and thought that he could hide things away from God. So he decided to take a colorful robe or colorful cloak and also silver and gold and he hid them under his tent. He brought God's curse down on the entire nation of Israel and caused 36 innocent people to die. So Achan and his family suffer the judgment of their sin deserved. Verse 25 and 26 of Joshua 7. This, is, this was their judgment. Verse 25 and 26 of Joshua 7. And Joshua said, why did you bring trouble on us? The Lord brings trouble on you today. And all Israel stoned him with stones. They burned them with fire and stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones that remains to this day. And the Lord turned from his burning anger. Therefore, to this day, the name of that place is called the Valley of Achor. Amen. So here we saw Achan and his family was stoned to that because of their covenant breaking. You might ask, 
why the whole Aikens family had to face that judgment. Why not only one man Aiken who did all this trouble, who made all this trouble, but the whole, his family. It was because his family were silent spectator. They knew Aiken's sin, but they did not stop him. They didn't report to Joshua and God knew their sin. Once Aiken's sin was blotted out, removed, God again allowed the victory to Israel and they defeated the city Ai or Ai. And this time God ordered that they may keep the spoil, the jewelry, the gold, the silver, the beautiful things, livestock and rest of the city's wealth. God allowed them to take as much as they wanted until they're satisfied. So Achan, if he waited and he, if he obeyed God's command, he could have gotten what he wanted in, uh, from the battle of Ai. What did you think from the story of Achan, whose action affected so many people? There are two things that we're going to learn from this story and apply to our lives. Number one, the first thing we need to learn from Achan's sin is that our greed our greediness can cause the destruction of our soul and destruction for many people. Greed is a selfish desire to obtain something or someone. Greediness is caused from one's discontentment, dissatisfaction. When a person is not satisfied and is not thankful for what they have, the greed creeps up in one's heart and controls a whole body, thought, mind, and heart, and soul to hunger and thirst for more, more, and more things. There is no limit to humans' greediness. When a person is being greedy, there is no sharing nor caring, no looking out for other people who are in need. Greed makes one to focus and love oneself, not other people, but only oneself, not even God either. This is a total opposite of God's command of, of love God and love the neighbor and serve others. Our world right now praises and encourage those who make, those who have more things. Terms like YOLO, flexing, young and rich, highlights and promotes the materialistic life and degrades those who have less. Our materialistic world further blinds a lot of people to chase after their greed, chase after their desire, selfish desire only. You might think, what is wrong with working so hard to get a good thing, get an expensive thing, get maybe even luxurious things? There is no wrong for working hard to get what we wish to have. But if that becomes our purpose of life, our joy of life, then it is an idolatry. Greediness is the fastest way of someone to destruction. And we see that from Aiken's story. Another example of greed causing a great destruction to people was the story of Adam and Eve. When Satan tempted Eve, he not only twisted God's word and lied, but he also used Eve's greediness or greed inside her to disobey God's command. Genesis 3, 6 says, so when the woman saw the tree was good for food, and that it was delight to the eyes. And that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her. And he ate. Eve fell to Satan's temptation because of her greed inside of her. To take pleasing things for herself. To become as wise as God, as high as God, as knowledgeable as God. 
And we know the consequences of that greed. And we are greatly affected by Eve and Adam's greediness, which is a world filled with sin, hatred, selfishness, injustice, and also death. Is your heart filled with greed? Are you not satisfied of what you have? Are you not thankful for what you receive? And are you complaining all the time and all you think about is getting this or that? I really insist you to control yourself. Be thankful to everything that you have. Also, even the things that you do not have right now. Be thankful. Do not fall to that destruction. Look around and see other people and help and serve others who are in need. If you are too young to help others with your finance, then realize how luxurious life that you already have, how much you receive from God and from your parents. Greed does not make one happy, but it will destroy you and me, just like it destroyed Achan and his family. The second thing and the last thing that we can learn from the story of Achan and his sin is that we see the powerful effects of one person's action for all. Again, we see the powerful effect of one person's action for many people. When Achan, one person broke, it, broke the covenant, God judged the whole entire Israelite. He did not allow the victory to Israel. And also he, or 36 men died in the battle. It may seem unfair, but if you look around our lives, we see a lot of example when one person's action affects the whole lot of people. For example, the Olympic, which comes every four years, should have happened last year, the year of 2020. But because of COVID, it has postponed to this year, and we will, see, we will soon see them competing in their game, the athletes competing there at, at their games. A lot of us, I believe, we do not have relationship with those athletes. I wish I do. But because we share the same citizenship with some of those athletes, we are joyful over, we're joyful over their victory, and we get saddened by their defeat. When one American athlete wins a gold medal, us Americans becomes all pride, proud. And we, we, we say, oh yeah, we're so good at running, we're so good at swimming, we're athletic, we have athletic genes, whatnot. When one American athlete loses a game, we get all saddened by the athlete's loss. Why do we get affected by one person's action because we're tied under the name of the United States of America. Another example we see is that when a Christian is involved in some kind of crime, the whole Christian are blamed and criticized by those who are not, by those who are outside of Christian or outside of Christianity. Why one Christian's action affect the whole group? because we share the important identity as God's people, God's church. God judged the whole Israel community because of one man, Achan's sin. However, there was much greater and powerful effect done by one person in the history of all people. God created this one person's righteousness, his justice, and his obedience to all believers. Whose righteousness and justice and obedience did God credit for other people and save those from their eternal judgment? Jesus Christ. Jesus, one person's action meant life for many his the one person's action jesus christ's action 
save us from our destruction. Because Jesus suffered all the punishment of everyone's covenant breaking, God wrote, pay in full on every believer's account. Isn't this great news for you and me? You and I did nothing to be free from all our debt, which was caused by our sin. This was the grace of God. God allowed his grace and cover our sin through one man and his action. Jesus is believed. Jesus is obedient in his righteousness and his faithfulness to God. Romans 5, chap chapter 5, verse 18 to 20 says, Therefore, as one trespass, one sin led to the condemnation of all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men and women. For as by the one man's disobedience and many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Verse 20, now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. Verse 21, I'm gonna go uh, read one more verse. So that as sin reigned in death, Grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. How much of Jesus' life, suffering, death, and resurrection gave effect on people? It is far greater, far powerful, far higher, and stronger than the effectiveness of Achan's sin on Israelites, and also Adam and Eve's sin on the whole humanity. GSPC junior high students, from Aiken's story, we saw how destructive our selfish greed and disobedience can be, uh, can be on one person as well as other people. We also learned that through uh, though we inherit the eternal judgment and eternal punishment through Adam and Eve, we were also graciously inherited the forgiveness of our sin and judgment and receive the everlasting life of joy and happiness through one man, Jesus Christ. So let's control our heart and mind. Let's control our greed that will cause, to, cause us to destruction. And let's be thankful. Let's be satisfied. And let's, let's also remember what Jesus, one man, did for all of us. And let's be humble before our God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for um, giving us this message from Achan's sin, we receive the warning to control our heart and obey your commands. Father, let us cleanse our hearts every day by reading of the gospel, by praying to you, by repenting our sin and asking you forgiveness. Father, we thank you for clearing our death through your son, Jesus Christ. You did it all. We did nothing to deserve that. Father, we thank you for your gift of your son, your one and only son. Please help us to be humble before you and remember that all the things that we have is from you. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen.